when you think of thin-walled pressure vessels, think of your TA Serenity. Ah, because I'm so thin? No, because you're shaped like a propane tank. <coughs> all right, all right, take it easy, you two. So thin-walled pressure vessels can also be used to represent pipes. And in this example problem, we'll look at two different possibilities, one where there is a valve shut so that there's no flow through the pipe, and then another where the valve is open and there is flow through the pipe. So two types of stress are gonna come up for uh, pressure vessel problems. One is hoop stress and one longitudinal stress. So hoop stress, just think of like a hula hoop, right? The actual ring is expanding and getting bigger as a result of all the pressure pushing outwards in all the different directions. Longitudinal stress is then gonna be when your cylindrical pipe is getting lengthened because if there's a valve on one end that's shut, all the water is pushing against it and trying to stretch the pipe outwards in a longitudinal, the length of the pipe is getting longer. So if the valve is open and there is water flowing all the way through the pipe, then the easy game, right? The longitudinal stress will be zero because all the water is just flowing freely through the pipe. There's nothing holding it back that's causing that sort of stretching motion. So longitudinal stress is gonna be zero in this case. But if the fluid is under pressure, even though it's flowing fine in one direction, it's still pushing outwards. It's still trying to make the ring bigger, still trying to make the diameter larger. And so we still have to do hoop stress. Now from the FE reference manual, I can grab this equation for hoop stress, but this isn't the easiest version of the equation, right? If this is a thin-walled pressure vessel, if we wanna use that thin-walled approximation, the equation will get a little bit easier. So I'm gonna compare the radius to the thickness. So if the radius is large and the thickness is a thin wall, then this ratio will be very large. If it's greater than 10, that's a good assumption, that's a, a good estimate where you can use the thin-walled assumption. And then in that case, your uh, hoop stress is just gonna be the uh, pressure times the radius divided by thickness. And this gets us to 6,000 PSI or six KSI, if you wanna work in kips per square inch. Now, if we change the problem a little bit and we have an operator actually close the valve so that now the water is pushing up against the edge, right? So now pressure is pushing kind of outwards, is trying to lengthen it because it's trying to push its way through the valve. Now we have to incorporate longitudinal stress as well. Almost as easy, PR divided by 2T this time. We get 3,600 PSI for longitudinal stress. And the hoop stress is still exactly the same, just PR over T, same as in the last case, uh, it doesn't matter that now we have longitudinal. Hoop stress is still the same, PR divided by T, 7,200 PSI or 7.2 KSI. Now, if I want to draw this stress as a stress element on an actual element, like a little teeny tiny square piece, as if we actually went in with like a, a, a hacksaw or a jab saw and actually cut out a little square of this pipe, and we wanted to look at the stresses on that little square on the edge of the pipe, then we would have the 3,600 KSI pointing outwards in tension because the pressure is trying to stretch it outwards in the direction, in the longitudinal direction. 7.2 KSI will be pointed kind of up and down in the direction of the ring, basically, right? This is the hoop stress is pushing outwards but the stress itself is not actually pointing outward of the radius. Like it's not towards the center of the circle and away from the center of the circle. It's in the direction of the circumference of the circle. From the perspective of that individual piece of the pipe, it's the circumference that's stretching. So it's stretching kind of along the direction of the circle of the pipe. 
And so what would have happened if we hadn't made this thin wall assumption, right? What if we had actually used that equation from the FE reference manual? You can see now if we plugged in the actual radius and thickness, um, we would have gotten instead for hoop stress 6127 PSI and this 7353 PSI for the second part, which is only an error around two or three percent. When you get an error that's less than 5% or less than 2%, that's good justification that your simplification, that your assumptions were, were good ones. If this video helped you out and you wanna help me out, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I know it's a vanity metric that means nothing, but it still makes me feel better to see that number tick up a little bit extra day. So you're doing me a huge solid and have a great rest of your day, rest of your weekend, and good luck on your next test.